Garlowy remembers. The fat controller had sent Edward to works to be mended. Near the works station, Edward noticed a narrow gauge engine standing in an open sided shed. That's Scarlowy, he thought. What's he doing there? He remembered Scarlowy and his brother Rhineus. Because in the old days, he had often brought passengers who wanted to travel up to the lake in their little train. As the men at the works could not mend him at once, Edward asked them to put him on a siding close to Scarlowy. Scarlowy was pleased to see Edward. The owner has just bought two more engines, he said. He told me I was a very old engine and deserved a good rest. He gave me the shed so that I could see everything and not be lonely. But I am lonely all the same, he continued sadly. I miss Renius very much. Yesterday, one of the new engines pushed him on a truck and now he's gone to be mended. I wish I could be mended too and pull coaches again. Have your coaches got names? asked Edward. Oh, yes. There's Agnes, Ruth, Jemima, Lucy and Beatrice. Agnes is proud. She has cushions for first-class passengers. She pities Ruth, Jemima and Lucy, who are third-class with bare boards. But they all four sniff at Beatrice. Beatrice often smells of fish and cheese, but she is most important, said Scarlowy earnestly. She has a little window through which the guard sells tickets. I sometimes leave the others behind, but I always take Beatrice. You must have tickets and a guard, you know. Of course, said Edward gravely. Renius and I, continued Scarlowy, used to take turns at pulling the trains. We know everybody and everybody knows us. We whistle for people in the fields, at level crossings, and in lonely cottages and farms, and the people always wave to us. We love passing the school playgrounds at break time. And then the children will always run over to the fence to watch us go by. The passengers always wave because they think the children are waving to them. But we engines know better, of course, said Scarlowy importantly. Yes, we do indeed, agreed Edward. We take your tourists to the lake and then get ready to pull the train back. We enjoy the morning journey home because then our friends from the villages come down to do their shopping. We whistle before every station, beep, beep, look out! And the people are there ready. Where's Mrs. Last? asks the guard. She's coming. Beep, beep, we whistle. And Mrs. Last comes running onto the platform. We'll leave you behind one of these days, Mrs. Laughs our driver. But we know he never will. We stop elsewhere too, at farm crossings and stiles, where paths lead to lonely houses. Renius and I know all the places very well indeed. And our driver used to say that we would stop even if he didn't put on the brakes. Sometimes on market day, Ruth, Jemima and Lucy were so full of people that the guard would allow third-class passengers to travel in Agnes. She didn't like that at all. And would grumble, first-class coach, third-class people. That made me cross. Shut up, I'd say, or I'll bump you. That soon stopped her rudeness to my friends. Just then, some workmen came. We're going to mend you now, Edward, they said. Come along. Well, goodbye, Scarlowy. Thank you for telling me about your railway. It's a lovely little line. It is, it is. Thank you for talking to me, Edward. You've cheered me up. Goodbye. <whistles> Scarlowy watched Edward being taken back to the works. Then, shutting his eyes, he dozed in the warm afternoon sun. He smiled as he dozed, for he was dreaming, as old engines will, of happy days in the past. Sir Handel. The new engines looked very smart. One was called Sir Handel, and the other Peter Sam. What a small shed, grumbled Sir Handel. This won't do at all. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Huh, grunted Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Shush, shush, said Peter Sam. That's Scarlowy, the famous old engine. 
I'm sorry, Scarlowy, he whispered. Sir Handel's upset now, but he's quite nice, really. Scarlowy felt sorry for Peter Sam. No, Sir Handel, said the farmer next morning. We'll get you ready. I'm tired, he yawned. Let Peter Sam go. He'd love it. No, said the farmer. Owner's orders, you're first. Oh, well, said Sir Handel sulkily. I suppose I must. When his driver arrived, Sir Handel puffed away to fetch the coaches. Whatever next, he snorted. Those aren't coaches. They're cattle trucks. Ooh, screamed Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima and Beatrice. What a horrid engine. It's not what I'm used to, clanked Sir Handel rebelliously, making for the station. He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, he said. Who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. Yes, I've heard of you. You're an express engine, I believe. So am I, but I'm used to bogey coaches, not these cattle trucks. Do you have bogey coaches? Oh, yes, I see you do. We must have a chat sometime. Sorry I can't stop. Must keep time, you know. And he puffed off, leaving Gordon at a loss for words. Come along! Come along, he puffed. Cattle trucks! Cattle trucks! grumbled the coaches. We'll pay him out! We'll pay him out! Presently they stopped at the station. The line curved here and began to climb. It was not very steep, but the day was misty and the rails were slippery. Hold back, whispered Agnes to Ruth. Hold back, whispered Ruth to Jemima. Hold back, whispered Jemima to Lucy. Hold back, whispered Lucy to Beatrice. And they giggled as the handles started and their couplings tightened. Come on, come on, puffed as his wheels slipped on the greasy rails. Come on, come on, come on, come on. His wheels were spinning, but the coaches pulled him back and the train stopped on the hill beyond the station. I can't do it. I can't do it, he grumbled. I'm used to sensible bogey coaches, not these bumpy cattle trucks. The guard came up. I think the coaches are up to something, he told the driver. So they decided to bring the train down again to a level piece of line to give us a handle a good start. The guard helped the farm and put sand on the rails, and Sir Handel made a tremendous effort. The coaches tried hard to drag him back, but he puffed and pulled so hard that they were soon over the top and away on their journey. The thin controller was severe with Sir Handel that night. You are a troublesome engine, he said. You are rude, conceited, and much too big for your wheels. Next time I shall punish you severely. Sir Handel was impressed and behaved well for several days. Then, one morning, he took the train to the top station. He was cross. It was Peter Sam's turn, but the thin controller had made him go instead. We'll leave the coaches, said his driver, and fetch some trucks from the quarry. Trucks, snorted Sir Handel. Trucks. Yes, his driver repeated, trucks. Sir Handel jerked forward. I won't, he muttered. So there. Lurched, bumped and stopped. His driver and farman got out. Told you, said Sir Handel triumphantly. He had pushed the rails apart and settled down between them. They telephoned the thin controller. He came up at once with Peter Sam and brought some workmen in a truck. Then he and the farman took Peter Sam home with the coaches, while the driver and workman put Sir Handel back on the rails. Sir Handel did not feel so pleased with himself when he crawled home and found the thin controller waiting for him. You are a very naughty engine, he said sternly. You will stay in the shed till I can trust you to behave. Peter Sam and the Refreshment Lady. As Sir Handel was shut up, Peter Sam had to run the line. He was excited, and the farman found it hard to get him ready. 
Sober up, can't you? He growled. Anybody would think, said Sir Handel rudely, that he wanted to work. All respectable engines do, said Scarlowy firmly. I wish I could work myself. Keep calm, Peter Sam. Don't get excited and you'll do very well. But Peter Sam was in such a state that he couldn't listen. When his driver came, Peter Sam ran along to fetch the coaches. Beep, 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 come along, girls, he whistled. And although he was so excited, he remembered to be careful. That's the way, my dears, gently does it. What did he say? Asked Jemima, who was deaf. He said, come along, girls. And he, he called us his dears, simpered the other coaches. Really, one does not know what to think. Such a handsome young engine, too. So nice and well-mannered. And they tittered happily together as they followed Peter Sam. Peter Sam fussed into the station to find Henry already there. This won't do, youngster, said Henry. I can't be kept waiting. If you are late tonight, I'll go off and leave your passengers behind. Pooh, said Peter Sam. But secretly, he was a little worried. But he couldn't feel worried for long. What fun it all is, he thought as he ran around his train. He let off steam happily while he waited for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. Peter Sam puffed happily away, singing a little song. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. I'm Peter Sam, I'm running this line. The people waved as he passed the farms and cottages, and he gave a loud whistle at the school. The children all ran to see him puffing by. Agnes, Ruth, Jemima, Lucy and Beatrice enjoyed themselves too. He's cocky, chop, chop, but he's nice, chop, chop. He's cocky, chop, chop, but he's nice, chop, chop. They sang as they trundled along. They were growing very fond of Peter Sam. Every afternoon, they had to wait an hour at the station by the lake. The driver, farmer and the guard usually bought something from the refreshment lady and went and sat in Beatrice. The refreshment lady always came home on this train. Time passed slowly today for Peter Sam. At last, his driver and farmer came. Beep, beep. Hurry up, please, he whistled to the passengers. And they came strolling back to the station. Peter Sam was sizzling with impatience. How awful, he thought, if we miss Henry's train. The last passengers arrived. The guard was ready with his flag and whistle. The refreshment lady walked across the platform. Then it happened. The guard says that Peter Sam was too impatient. Peter Sam says he was sure he heard a whistle. Anyway, he started. Come quickly! Come quickly! He puffed. Stop, stop, stop! wailed the coaches. You've left her behind! You've left her behind! The guard whistled and waved his red flag. The driver, looking back, saw the refreshment lady shouting and running after the train. Bother, groaned Peter Sam as he stopped. We'll miss Henry now. The refreshment lady climbed into Beatrice and they started again. Oh, oh, we're sure to be late. Oh, oh, we're sure to be late, panted Peter Sam frantically. His driver had to keep checking him. Steady, oh boy, steady. Beep, beep. Peter Sam whistled at the stations. Hurry, please. Hurry! And they reached the big station just as Henry steamed in. Hoorah! said Peter Sam. We've caught him after all. And he let off steam with relief. Whoosh! Not bad, youngster, said Henry loftily. The refreshment lady shook her fist at Peter Sam. What do you mean by leaving me behind? she demanded. I'm sorry, refreshment lady, but I was worried about our passengers. And he told her what Henry had said. The refreshment lady laughed. Oh, you silly engine, she said. Henry wouldn't dare go. He's got to wait. It's a guaranteed connection. Well, said Peter Sam. Well, where's that Henry? 
but Peter Sam was too late that time, for Henry had trottled away. The handle stayed shut up for several days, but one market day, Peter Sam could not work. He needed repairs. So Handel was glad to come out. He tried to be kind, but the coaches didn't trust him. They were awkward and rude. He even sang them little songs, but it was no use. It was most unfortunate, too, that Sir Handel had to check suddenly to avoid running over a sheep. He's pumped us! screamed the coaches. Let's pay him out! The coaches knew that all engines must go carefully at a place near the big station. But they were so cross with Sir Handel that they didn't care what they did. They surged into Sir Handel, making him lurch off the line. Luckily, no one was hurt. Sir Handel limped to the shed. The thin controller inspected the damage. No more work for you today, he said. Bother those coaches. We must take the village people home and fetch the tourists. All without an engine. What about me, sir? said a voice. Scarlowy, he exclaimed. Can you do it? I'll try, answered the old engine. The coaches stood at the platform. Scarlowy advanced on them, hissing crossly. I must Ashamed of you, he scolded. Such behaviour! You might have hurt your passengers. On market day, too. We're sorry, Scarlowy. We, we didn't think. It's That's a handle, he's... No tails, said Scarlowy firmly. I won't have it. And don't you dare try tricks on me. No, Scarlowy. Oh, of course not, Scarlowy, quavered the coaches meekly. Scarlowy might be old and have dirty paint, but he was certainly an engine who would stand no nonsense. His friends crowded round, and the guard had to shoo them away before they could start. Scar Lowy felt happy. He remembered all the gates and stiles where he had to stop, and whistled to his friends. The sun shone, the rails were dry. This is lovely, he thought. But presently, they began to climb and he felt short of steam. Oh, bother my tubes, he panted. Take your time, old boy, soothed his driver. I'll manage, I'll manage, he wheezed, and pausing for breath at the stations, he gallantly struggled along. After a rest at the top station, Scarlowy was ready to start. It'll be better downhill, he thought. The coaches ran nicely, but he soon began to feel tired again. His springs were weak, and the rail joints jarred his wheels. Then with a crack, a front spring broke, and he stopped. I feel all crooked, he complained. That's torn it, said his driver. We'll need a bus now for our passengers. No, pleaded Scarlowy. I'd be ashamed to have a bus take my passengers. I'll get home or burst, he promised bravely. The thin controller looked at his watch and paced the platform. James and his train waited impatiently too. They heard a horse peep, peep. Then groaning, clanging and clanking, Scarlowy crept into sight. He was tilted to one side and making fearful noises, but he plodded bravely on. I'll it. <sighs> I'll do it! <sighs> he gasped between the clanks and groans. I'll... I've done it! <sighs> and he sighed thankfully as the train stopped where James was waiting. James said nothing. He waited for his passengers and then respectfully puffed away. You were right, sir said Scarlowy to the owner that evening. Old engines can't pull trains like young ones. The owner smiled. 
They can if they're mended, old faithful, he said. And that's what will happen to you. You deserve it. Oh, sir, said Scarlowe happily. Sir Handel is longing for Scarlowe to come back. He thinks Scarlowe is the best engine in the world. He does his fair share of the work now, and the coaches never play tricks on him, because he always manages them in Scarlowe's way.